Radio Rahim here with Michael, your mark of Rock Nation. Congratulations on putting together a fight that the fans absolutely insisted on seeing. When you guys negotiate with uh, main events, there's always a back and forth about who's responsible for what and how this thing comes together. Once you guys got to talking and whatnot, was this an easy fight to make or is it as difficult as people perceived it to be? You know, at the end of the day, the bigger the fight is, the more challenging it is to make. But everybody wanted this fight. You know, the fighters wanted it, the promoters wanted it, the managers wanted it, so we had to find a way to get it done. And so, yeah, you know, you bump heads a little bit. Um, it takes a little bit longer than you may anticipate. Um, but everyone was focused, you know, on one goal, and that was making this rematch happen. Um, we at Rock Nation ultimately got the deal that we were looking for. Uh, we had to protect our interests. We had to protect our fighter's interest, which was really, really important. We got it done, and now we're ready to go for, for June 17th. So much was made of whether or not June or uh, November met the standard for what kind of revenue should be generated by a fight like this. Turned out to be a great fight. There's a lot of anticipation for the rematch. What kind of adjustments did you guys need to make to ensure that this one brought the value to get everybody paid off in the way that you had hoped? You know, listen, in all transparency, you know, from my perspective, from our perspective, November's fight was a little bit of a disappointment. It didn't do the pay-per-view numbers that we'd anticipated. But I, I think we've turned the page. I mean, this fight right now has got a lot of heat on it. You know, obviously the way the fight ended creates a lot of curiosity, creates a lot of anticipation uh, and a desire, you know, for both guys to get back in the ring again. And then clearly now there's history, right? These fighters didn't have history. There was probably too much respect between the two fighters. Now, as you can see, um, they dislike each other. They do not like each other. They don't stand for the same things. They come from different backgrounds. They have contrasting styles. That's what makes great fights. So if I'm somebody sitting at home and I'm a sports enthusiast or I'm a casual sports fan, this is the kind of event I want to either be at or I want to buy and watch. So I think it's got a lot more heat on it. Um, we're going to promote it a little bit differently. We're going to be very, very aggressive. Obviously, obviously HBO's got to do their job. Rock Nation has got to do our job. Main Events has to do their job. But we think that this fight will do much better than the fight in November. But in regards to practical application, I mean, there's some basic things that everybody does when they're promoting a fight, press week, press conferences, workouts, but you have what, like a gym in your back pocket and who's been noticeably absent from Rock Nation fights. Having Jay-Z there, I think, you know, probably brings a lot of value to that ticket. Has he been interested in being involved, like being a, a, the face of Rock Nation or being involved in the event in any way? You know, listen, Jay's very respectful of all of our clients, whether it's Andre Ward or Kevin Durant or Rihanna, whoever it may be. And he never loves, he never likes to take a step in front of them. So Jay's always in the background, all right, allowing our stars and our clients to do their thing. At the end of the day, this fight doesn't happen without his support, without the support of his partner Juan Perez, who heads up our sports division. Um, but will he get involved in helping to promote this fight? That's not his job. Will he be there on June 17th? Schedule permitting, you know, hopefully he'll be there. Um, but that's our job, right? Our job is to go out there and tell the story and to make people understand why this is a fight that they must buy. And by the way, Jay is talking to us behind the scenes. He's encouraging us. He's providing um, suggestions as to how we can do a better job of promoting it. So he's involved. People may not see that. But he's very much involved behind the scenes, making sure that we're doing all the right things, right, to make this a successful event. You also have to understand, the last fight, we were on the B-side. So we were very limited in terms of what our influence could be on that outcome. But that's changed now. We've got the champion. We've got the A-side. Now we can be a little bit more aggressive. We can do it the rock way. And so that's why we're really confident that we're going to be successful. Now, it was risen by the Andre Ward camp in the first fight about Sergey getting a deal that they thought was a raw deal or giving him, uh, you know, the business about not doing good business. Even Ward's done that recently. And on the other side, they lobbed back that having a Jay-Z, uh, you have a kind of a treasure chest that you can dip into to make your fighter happy. 
it may be an uncomfortable uh, dynamic, but is it the case that you're able to pay your fighters or even overpay your fighters to be happy in the sport as you break into boxing and get fights like this made and give them the paydays that they want? I don't think it's about overpaying. You know, we don't overpay. But what we like to do is compensate our athletes the way they deserve to be compensated. So in the case of Andre Ward, um, we're compensating him based on what we believe he deserves to be compensated. Um, and is that predicated on the amount of money generated? No, listen, I don't think it, it's based on you know our resources as a company or Jay. Um, but obviously, Jay has always been, and our company has always been, and his partners have always been pro-client. So we always want to take that extra step and be extra fair uh, to our clients and to make sure that ultimately they're happy with their compensation. As it relates to Kathy Duva and main events, she runs her business. And how she wants to compensate Sergey Kovalov um, is her business. Uh, we don't get involved in that. We do our business. She does her business. Um, at the end of the day, we hope that her fighter is happy with what he makes and we hope that Andre is satisfied with his compensation. We know you expect Andre Ward to be successful. Uh, the Triple G camp has been talking about a possible matchup willing to move to 68 to fight Ward, knowing that that's a now a step down in weight, but maybe the only other big fight he could get of big money if he wins this one. Is that something that you'd like to see Ward do? Is that a negotiation you'd be willing to enter into? You know what, that's entirely up to Andre. Um, we, we don't really tell him who to fight and, and when to fight. Ultimately, it's him and it's, it's his manager, James Prince, and his attorney, Josh Dubin. Um, at the end of the day, I think that would be a great fight. Um, there's no question about it. But we got to take it one step at a time. You know, Andre's got a big challenge in front of him on June 17th. Once he's victorious, you know, we'll start thinking about what's next. But ultimately, he's going to make that decision. And if he calls us and said, listen, this is the path I want to take, those will be our marching orders, and we'll try to make that happen for him. And lastly... Miguel Cotto. I, last time I talked to you, we were getting ready for Cotto, and we thought this was going to happen in Texas. Obviously, injuries happen in the sport. Fight fell out, but we haven't heard much in regards to what we can expect from him now. How is that going? Is there something uh, on the horizon that you guys can mention? So, you know, listen, it, it's been reported that we're trying to do something in June, you know, the latter part of June. Um, you know, the date that we've, that we've been looking at is June 24th. You know, we haven't secured a final opponent yet, but there are a couple of people that we're honed in on right now. Um, um, you know, again, uh, every deal has, you know, its issues and, and, and things have to go through a certain process and, and every, every, every fight that you try to make takes a little bit of time. Um, our hope is that within the next week to 10 days, we will secure, you know, an opponent for Miguel. Uh, on the 24th uh, of June and we'll be able to announce something. But clearly he wants to get back in the ring. We want him to get back in the ring. He's anxious. As you said, um, we were all disappointed about Kirkland. Um, it threw a bit of a curveball, you know, to us. But, but we're committed to making sure that uh, he fights once and hopefully twice between now and the end of the year. Uh, Freddie Roach has said this is going to be his last year fighting. Cotto, I mean, um, if that's the case and we're still looking at June, can you throw out some uh, front runners for what would likely be Miguel Cotto's last two fights of a storied career? You know, listen, like, like Andre Ward, I mean, at the end of the day, Miguel Cotto's going to fight who he wants to fight. We're here to support him. Um, again, we're going to take it one fight at a time. We haven't really got ahead of ourselves. Uh, ideally, he fights in June and then maybe again in fourth quarter. Um, but it's got to be the right opponent. It's got to be the right opportunity. Listen, Miguel doesn't have to fight right now. Um, he does it because he loves the sport. He's still got a lot of gas in the tank. Um, we've heard him talk about that uh, in the past. And hopefully, again, within the next 10 days, we'll be able to announce something. Radio Raw here with Michael Yormark. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Much information there. Thank you for taking the time. Thank we'll you. see you June 17th on my birthday. I know you guys made that fight because it was my birthday. I wasn't going to say anything publicly, but I appreciate it. <laughs> on my birthday, June 17th, Mandalay Bay Andre Ward versus Sergey Kovalev. Thank you, sir.